Every day, we are inundated with news from various sources. But do the news outlets truly provide the story behind the story, the history and the context of world events with a global perspective? According to Atul Singh, they do not. And that is why he founded the online journal, The Fair Observer. The journal aims to provide readers with in-depth analysis of the events and issues that affect our world. People from around the globe from various fields of expertise contribute to the Fair Observer, providing readers with a plurality of perspectives from different disciplines and philosophies. Atul Singh joined ATV's special broadcast to discuss the journal and the challenges he faces trying to offer viewers a 360 degree view of the world. The objective is to provide the reader a first class understanding of the world, to be a platform where you get the best analysis of issues of significance, of trends that are important, and of events um, that matter. And um, you as a, as a reader can come and say, aha, I now know what's going on. And, and um, we want to tell you what is the story behind the story? What is the context from the past? what is the significance today, and what are the implications for the future. And that's why our motto is Fair Observer Makes Sense of the World. Founded in 2010, the Fair Observer is an international online platform that provides a 360 degree analysis of world events and global issues. If you look at the global media market, there is too much news and too little analysis. That's problem one. Then. When you do get analysis, it is invariably ethnocentric anywhere in the world. That's problem two. And when you do get analysis, it is often without context. That is problem three. So what we do is we give you context, solving problem three. We give you analysis, solving problem one. And we give you analysis from people from different disciplines and many parts of the world solving problem two. So what we give you basically is a plurality of perspectives so that you as a reader can make sense of the world. And the reason we do so is we think that if you come from one culture or one discipline, you'll have a blind sight. And if everyone is from the same culture and that same discipline, everyone will have the same blind sight. And we want there to be fewer blind sights. We want there to be a global dialogue. And we think there is one publication that has global coverage and global reach, and that is The Economist. But to our mind, The Economist is far too Oxford and Cambridge. Um, the people who write The Economist invariably come from those two ancient universities. And it's a great publication. I subscribe to it. But it is not a publication that fosters a global dialogue. And that is what we are all about. We want the Brazilian, the American, the German, the, Af the, the Nigerian, the Indian, the Chinese, all on the same platform. Um, and, uh, and at the same time, uh, we want the pediatrician, the physicist, the historian, the philosopher, the uh, uh, business manager, the hedge fund, uh, um, superstar, uh, the ex-diplomat, the ex-intelligence chief, all on the same platform. With an audience from over 160 countries, the Fair Observer has grown into an international community for people to share ideas. Over 200 contributors from over 30 countries submit to the journal. What we do is that we make sure that you get many perspectives. We assume that everyone has some bias, whether it is cultural, whether it is historical, whether it is um, disciplinary. There is always going to be some bias, but we try to get to make sure that A, you know the identity of the person who's writing, unlike The Economist. And two, uh, we try to make sure that you get many people writing about many disciplines, and we often do a 360 degree view analysis. But what we, mean, what we mean by that is you get 
many people from many countries and many philosophies and many disciplines and many ideologies writing on the same topic as we did in Palestine. So that is why we say we give you a 360 degree view of the world because we are giving you um, sometimes on one topic and on numerous others, what you're getting is you're not getting just one, the one snapshot view from Washington DC or Delhi or Beijing or for that matter, Berlin. What you're getting is a view from various cultures, various countries, various disciplines, various um, ideologies. And that's how we remain ideologically neutral, by being a platform for everyone, as long as it's quality. And what are some of the challenges that you've faced by trying to give readers a 360 degree view of the world? Uh, our readership is more discerning. Um, and so it is not as scalable. If we were to be partisan, we would immediately achieve scale in, uh, in a quicker way because then we'd be waving a flag for someone. So the challenges are, one, of course, um, uh, uh, scaling up quickly. Two is that uh, sometimes we upset people uh, from uh, all different uh, sides or, or varying sides. So when we published something on Palestine, we had some Israelis who were, who were annoyed, and then we had some Palestinians who were annoyed as well. And, and my philosophy is as long as we are getting shot at by, by both sides, we are fine. Anyone from any ideology can publish as long as you, you write well and you, or you, you go send us a good presentation or you send us a good info, infographic. The only uh, litmus test is quality. In countries where the media is heavily controlled by the government, yeah. how can you ensure a plurality of perspectives? Uh, we, we, we have to rely on dissidents who perhaps live outside that country. Or, or in certain cases, and uh, here uh, we normally wouldn't do this, but uh, and here uh, this is something we, we do if someone writing lives in a country with repression, with political repression, they can write incognito for us so as to ensure that we protect their, their family from reprisals. And can you give us a, an example of how the Fair Observer has been reporting the uprising in the Middle East, say for example from Egypt, how do you obtain coverage, uh, obtain stories for the Fair Observer? Well, I'll be uh, upfront and I'll say that uh, on Egypt, we haven't done as well as a job as we would like. And so we are trying to get analysis from Egyptians in Egypt and uh, it is a process that will take some time because we are new. But over time, we'll reach out to Egyptian economists, intellectuals, um, um, business leaders, uh, and, and, and uh, that is what we'd like to do. Uh, so far, we've been getting um, off and on analysis through, through uh, friends of friends, through uh, people who are getting to hear our name. It's a ripple effect. We've thrown a stone into the pond and the ripples are still, are still spreading out. Um, but what we would like to do when it comes to Middle East is have a lot of people, and we are starting to do that, a lot of people who understand it really well, are alive to the concerns, are alive to, to the issues at hand, um, um, uh, write very poignant, uh, uh, thoughtful uh, insights. And I think the Middle East is going through an extraordinary time and, and uh, it'll continue for a while. And I think, uh, give us a few months, we'll, we'll be there. Singh provided some advice for students with entrepreneurial ambitions. Find something you love. It's as simple as that. Uh, I couldn't say it better than the late Steve Jobs. He gave a great speech at Stanford. And um, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. Sometimes you find it early, sometimes you find it late. Um, find something you absolutely love and, and, um, and go for it. Um, entrepreneurship is hard. Um, sleepless nights, you lose hair, you lose muscle. Uh, and the only reason you'll, you'll do it is if you're doing something you absolutely love. And, um, and uh, once you do that, yeah, everything else is relatively more straightforward.